Now, when you're packing to go to boot camp, there are some things that you absolutely have to bring that are mandatory to bring. And if you don't bring them, you're going to have to mail them from home. So we're going to list all of those. But there are also some things that are optional, but would make your life easier if you know about them now before you get there and you see that other people have them and you don't. So here's a list of everything to bring to RTC, which is Recruit Training Command. That's the Navy's boot camp in Great Lakes, Illinois. First, we're gonna cover everything that you have to bring, the stuff that's mandatory to be brought. Number one, you need to bring your bank account information, meaning your checking account number and your bank's routing number in order for the Navy to be able to know where to send your paychecks during boot camp. After the Navy has that information, they're gonna start direct depositing the checks directly into your account and you don't have to worry about receiving a paper check and then going to cash it at a bank or anything. It's gonna be direct deposited right into your account. You can view the account number of your checking account by logging into your online banking. Just log into your online banking and at that point you can click on your checking account and they might ask you for additional information to verify it's you again, but they're gonna ask you to maybe provide your street you were born on or something, but it'll eventually reveal the entire account number it should be a lot of digits. Don't just write down the last four. Write down the entire checking account number. And for your bank's routing number, which is also needed for a direct deposit, you can just Google it. So like US Bank routing number, JP Morgan Chase routing number for where you are. You know, you can Google that and write down that number. Speaking of which, we might as well get it out of the way. Bring the contact information of your friends and family to boot camp. Now, when you bring your bank account information, don't try to just memorize it because your memory might not be perfect throughout boot camp. You might forget it. And don't just bring it on a regular note card because the note card can get damaged. I wrote down the contact information for my friends and family on a note card just like this, but somehow the note card got ripped in half and I only had half of it. The other half was lost. No idea how it happened. But because of that, I can only contact the people on one side of one half of the card. And like my friend Joe that was on the other side of the other half, I couldn't even contact once during boot camp. So what you can do to mitigate this is write down everything on a note card just like this, but also lay it down, you know, you write all the information on here, and then take some packing tape and just go over the top of it and flip it over, put some packing tape on the other side, and then take some scissors and cut it out and now it's laminated. So you can laminate the card and that way it can't get ripped. It's not gonna get all torn up. It's not gonna get scuffed up where it's gonna be all smeared or anything. The information that you brought is gonna be completely usable during boot camp. Again, don't try to memorize it because boot camp is gonna scramble your brain up. Like the stuff that you can remember like this, it's gonna be harder to remember. Music, movies, high school, your last job, whatever you were doing before you came to boot camp, it's gonna become a big scrambled up blur in your memory. I made a video about it, it's called The Mental Journey of Boot Camp. It's really a different experience and you're gonna see it when you get there, but I just wanna give you the fair warning now. Bring the information, laminate it on a note card and you can't go wrong, unless you lose the card, don't lose it. Number three, bring your photo ID or your driver's license, whichever one you have. If you wanna be a master at arms, which is what I am here, you need to have a driver's license. It's required to be a master at arms in the Navy, but I don't know if it's a requirement for every rating, but if you wanna be a different rating and it's not required, just bring your photo ID and that should be good enough. Now, you should also bring your social security card, but when you bring it, unlike the note card we just went over, do not laminate it because it messes up the authentication methods of the card. The government does not like it when you laminate social security cards so do not laminate your social security card you can put it into a little container where you know it's safe from being all ripped up and scuffed up and everything because it's paper versus like an id card which is plastic but do not laminate the card at this point you should have a little folder with you bring your birth certificate and the birth certificate of any dependents you have number five bring your marriage certificate and or your divorce decree and the reason you bring those and the birth certificates is because the military will give you extra pay in order to support your dependents. If you're interested in the topic of like what benefits and extra pay you're gonna receive based on your dependents and marriage situation and all that, all of that is covered in the military pay video. 
And of course, make sure you bring your phone and its charger. Like when you first get there, you're gonna make your phone call home to tell your wife, your kids, your girlfriend, your parents, whoever you're calling, to be like, hey, I arrived to RTC, I arrived to boot camp safely, I'll contact you in a couple of weeks. It's gonna be useful also for after graduation to communicate with your friends and family to be like, you know, hey, this is where I am, come pick me up, we're gonna hang out for this evening before I have to come back to the compartment, which is the room that you're staying in. You can't use your phone during boot camp, at least right now, but they might be kind of experimenting with that later on. It's possible that in the future, recruits are gonna be able to use their own cell phones for calls home during boot camp, but when I went through, that did not happen. It was only the prepaid phone cards to use in pay phones, but in the future, that could change. Lastly, if you take any prescription medication or if you have an inhaler or something like that, make sure you bring a decent amount of it to boot camp, but also make sure that the recruiter is aware of it so that the Navy is gonna be aware of it, MEPS is aware of it, and the military is gonna keep you supplied throughout boot camp with that prescription, with your inhalers. You don't have to bring a 10 week supply. Now I'm gonna say right off the bat here, don't show up to boot camp with a giant suitcase or a giant luggage package. Like, you're not going on vacation, you're not going to the moon, you don't need to bring a giant container to boot camp. If you do that, they're gonna take it and donate it or they're gonna throw it away, especially if you have a really expensive one, don't show up with a giant luggage container. Everything that you bring should be able to fit into like a backpack. Don't bring your gaming computer, don't bring your gaming console. Like if you need that stuff in a school or in the actual real world out here, you can have it mailed to you at that point. Bringing it with you to RTC is completely pointless. So when you get to RTC, just like they say in Spaceballs, bring only what you need to survive. So the first thing that's worth noting is that as of June 6th, 2022, you are now able to bring your own athletic shoes to RTC. Now, when I went through, we had to use the infamous black Go Faster shoes, and they even show up in my A-School video. I threw them away after C-School because I wanted to get my money's worth out of them, but they're really not the greatest shoes you're ever gonna have in your life. Now, when I got them at RTC, they not only issued them to me, but they also charged me and everybody else for them. And just like every other uniform item, they're gonna give you stuff, but you have to pay for it out of your future checks. It's gonna be deducted. So your first couple of paychecks are gonna be really small at RTC, but later on, it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. I guess that people complained about the go-fasters being uncomfortable and causing injuries, and even in the official Navy instruction, it says that it's in an effort to reduce running-related injuries that they're making this change, the authorization of civilian shoes that you bring to boot camp. So if you decide to bring your own shoes to boot camp, there is a criteria that you have to follow in order for the shoes to be approved in order to be used for the runs during boot camp. So in order for the shoes to be used during boot camp and be approved for the runs, number one, they need to be stenciled. And what I mean by that is your name and your division number needs to be on the inside of the shoe. So like every single item that you're issued in boot camp and used in boot camp has your name and division number on it. Now, it might be tempting to try to write your name in the shoe before you get to RTC. Do not do that. Now, when you get there, they're gonna give you a little stencil kit. They want you to use that little machine to stencil things. Now, if you show up there with your name already on the shoe, it might not get approved. They might just throw them into the take it back home with you bin or the pick it up after you are done with boot camp box, your ditty box. If you want the shoes to be used during boot camp, leave it blank, but you have to be okay with them being stenciled, meaning your name is gonna be stamped on the inside of the shoe in order to use it during training. Number two, they have to be a running shoe, not a casual shoe. And specifically in the instruction, Vans and Air Jordans are named as shoes that are not approved. They have to be a running shoe that is not casual. Number three, they have to have laces. So no non-lace shoes, no speed lace shoes, and no Velcro. And number four, they need to be in good taste in terms of the color and the pattern on the shoe. So like, I don't mean like Joan Rivers is gonna sit there and judge the fashion of your shoe, the laces, the colors, and all that. What I mean is they, they're looking for shoes that are gonna be in good taste with wearing them with the rest of the physical training uniform. So you can't have bright red or bright green you know, crazy colors, crazy patterns, bright colors. They want like solid white, solid black, you know, dark blue, dark red, stuff like that. 
Now, when you get to RTC, just have the shoes that you want to wear during boot camp with you and just hold them up to the RTCs and be like, hey, these are the shoes that I want to use during boot camp. And if they're approved, they're going to stay with you. And if they're not approved, you have the option of either donating them, throwing them away, or putting them into the ditty box and you're going to get them back at the end of boot camp. Just a word of advice, I don't recommend bringing highly expensive or rare shoes to RTC. They're going to get used, they're going to get banged up, they're going to get stolen potentially either during boot camp or after when you get to A school. Just avoid all of that. Get some shoes that work or just use the, the black go fasters that they give you. Regardless of if you bring your own shoes to RTC or not, you're still going to be issued the black go fasters by the Navy in order to comply with the Berry Amendment, which long story short just means the US military receives and is issued equipment that is made in the USA. By the way, these videos take a long time to make. I do them myself and I get you the information for free. All I ask in return is that you hit the like button and subscribe and I really appreciate it. All right, for one thing, you can bring a comb and a comb is gonna take up a lot less space than a brush. Anyways, you should bring your prescription glasses if you have them. Now during boot camp, you can't wear them. You can't wear contacts either. You're gonna have to wear the Navy issued ones. They're gonna test your eyes at the beginning of boot camp issue you some black rimmed glasses, and those are the ones you're gonna wear during boot camp. However, once you leave boot camp and go to A school, which is like the military college after boot camp to learn your actual job, the Navy issued glasses are no longer mandatory. They're gonna become optional. So save your prescriptions, save your contacts for that moment. But don't throw away the boot camp ones after you graduate RTC. Keep them as a reserve option because a friend of mine just broke his glasses recently here. And after he broke his glasses, instead of having nothing, he simply put on the glasses from boot camp to wear until he got new glasses again. You can bring razors and shaving cream and stuff like that, toiletries, but make sure they're all travel sized and not full size so they aren't seized at the airport on the way to RTC. You can buy that kind of stuff like shampoo and conditioner and soap and stuff like that at the little store at RTC. But if you're really comfortable with your razor, if you really like your certain whatever, it's okay to bring it. And even if you're not sure for something like your shaving razors, your shaving cream, you can bring them to RTC and it's either gonna be allowed in or not. But if it's you know sealed, if it's unopened, it should be allowed to come in. And if it's not, it's okay. You can just buy it again on the inside. You can bring religious texts and a religious medallion, but it has to be a very small one. I think it was two inches by one inch. If you want to wear a religious medallion at RTC, what most people do is just use the chain the Navy gives you, which is for actually your key. It looks kind of like a dog tag chain, but it's actually the chain for your key for the padlock on your locker, you know, inside your rack, which is your bed at RTC. Now, I already gave away my lock and key way back in A school two years ago, but this is the key that I use here and I save the chain because it makes the key bigger. It's less likely for me to lose it, you know, because of that. You aren't allowed to read any books or bring any books into RTC besides religious books like the Bible. And even though you can get them there, technically they're there for free, but there's a limited number and there's thousands and thousands of people that are probably requesting them. During boot camp, the storage space that you get is only about this big. And so I highly recommend that you get like a pocket edition paperback copy of your holy book, the Bible, the Torah, Quran, whichever, and make sure it's a small paperback edition in order to save a lot of other space in that drawer, you know, for you to have everything else in there. Because the rest of the rack is already all called for. The rest of your bed that you open up, all the space in there where all your stuff goes is all called for. So the little drawer you get to store everything else you know, your writing materials, your notebook, your, you know, your toiletries, all your stuff has to go into this little tiny space. You don't want half of it to be a holy book. You know, it's very important, but you can fit the same book, a pocket edition or like a little paperback one in a little corner versus a full size book. You're going to save a lot of space. So bring a little one and don't bring one that's very special to your family. So like in my family, I have my grandfather's Bible that my dad used and now it's in my possession. That's not the one that I would recommend bringing to RTC because in the drawer, in training, you know, while you're moving stuff around, it's going to get damaged. The paper is going to get crumpled up and ripped and stuff. You know, don't let your stuff get damaged. It's a very, very important thing to you and your family. 
go to the store, get a paperback one that's off the shelf. It should only be less than $10. For feminine hygiene products and birth control, you can bring some, but boot camp is 10 weeks long and none of the RDCs expect you to show up with a two and a half month supply of feminine hygiene products. Some of the RDCs are women. The staff understands the female situations. They're going to keep you well supplied throughout boot camp. Now, as for bringing makeup, it really shouldn't be a major concern because in all of training, there's only two times you can actually wear it. The first one's gonna be your division photo and the second one's gonna be your graduation. And in both events, you're gonna be wearing your dress blues, your dress whites with your white Dixie cup. Now, besides looking nice for one photo and for a one and a half hour event called graduation, where you finally leave RTC, the one thing they accomplished was caking on the makeup. They look really nice for the photo, they look really nice for the you know graduation, but they ruined the front of their covers. They were showing me afterwards that these girls put on the makeup and it's on their forehead, it's on their face, they got mascara, they got all that stuff. And it ruined the front of their cover. There's now a like band of makeup around the front of the cover. Now the good news is you get two of these in training. So hey. And by the way, yes, you are approved to bring your wedding ring. But these are just my initials. I would highly recommend that you bring a simple outfit of like a t-shirt and shorts, like basketball shorts and a t-shirt. You can't wear it in boot camp. You can't use it in boot camp. It's going to be put in the box that's going to be taken away from you and given back to you at the end of boot camp. But it's going to be very, very useful for when you get to A school. Now, I didn't do that. I only had my uniforms and the outfit that I came there with. I donated to Goodwill upon arrival to RTC. So when I got to A school, I had to go out in town in my peanut butters, the NSUs, and going out in town in your uniform even in a good city like San Antonio, it gets you unwanted attention. People make comments, people ask you questions. Bring civvies and you don't get unwanted attention from wearing your uniform off base. So anyways, when you finally get to RTC, one of the first things that's gonna happen is that your stuff is gonna get separated. Everything that you wanna bring into RTC and carry with you into training is gonna get checked and approved. And everything that you wanna keep but don't wanna throw away or donate it's gonna get put into a box called the Diddy Box. They're gonna tape it shut, they put your name on it, and it's gonna get put into storage and you don't get it back until the end of training. So the stuff that you brought but don't wanna keep or can't keep is either gonna get thrown away or donated to thrift stores so other people can buy it and use it. It's kinda of like a recycling thing. Everything that you bring should not be any bigger than a simple backpack like you're going to school. Again, you're not going on vacation, you're not going to the moon, you're just going to boot camp and 90% of the stuff that you're gonna need is gonna be given to you and issued to you. So all your uniforms, all your stuff, you know, you're gonna be fed, you're gonna be housed and all that stuff, food, water, shelter, you know, all of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and all that. You don't have to bring your house with you to RTC. Again, don't bring a suitcase, don't bring a luggage container. Everything on this list that we went over fits into a simple backpack and that's it. The other stuff that you're gonna need, but the Navy doesn't give you directly, you're gonna have the opportunity to buy at the next, at the little store on base with your Eagle card we went over, or with your debit card. You're not gonna go without, you're not gonna starve, you're not gonna be like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't bring this or that item and now I'm completely screwed. Nobody is out to get you. Their job is to bring you in and mold you into a sailor and then send you back out into the real world you're not on a desert island, you're not on Mars. There's no need to worry about this that much. So just bring everything that you're supposed to bring. The recommended items, you know, I can recommend them. And it's up to you if you wanna bring them or not. And for the rest, it's all on you. Now as for what you shouldn't bring to RTC, quickly said, if you have to ask, the answer is probably no. If you have to ask, is it okay to bring this? The answer is probably no. So quickly said, don't bring anything illegal, don't bring any weapons, don't bring any gambling devices like dice or dominoes or board games or whatever, playing cards, don't bring any drugs or alcohol, don't bring anything obscene. I mean, you already know. If you need to ask, don't bring it. So anyways, that's a decent rundown of what you can and should bring to RTC.